Hey, what's going on, everybody, and welcome back to The Pick Trail. I'm CJ Mack, and as I sit down with Kevin McPherson, as we get into our hog hoop support. And Kevin, basketball, like I said last week, is just right around the corner. Next week, the red and white game, which everybody can't wait, the scrimmage between the Razorbacks. And then earlier this week, we had pro hogs. We had a hog day, and my goodness, we couldn't quite get a lot of highlights from everything online and social media, but we've seen some stuff through Eric Musselman. But fill us in on that pro day and fill us in on the red and white game and some more stuff with the hog hoops. Yeah, I mean, you you that's where we want to start for sure because it's been a busy week when you look back and then looking ahead. A week from today is the red-white game. Yeah. Eric Mossman, you know, really, when he came to the program, he'll be in his fourth year this time around. But when he came into the program, Arkansas hadn't been in Barnhill Arena since Bud Walton Arena had opened the first year. And they had a red-white game the first year that Bud Walton opened up, opened up because it wasn't quite ready. So they had their red-white game there. That was back in 93. And so Eric Mossman and – before the 1920 season has a throwback to the eighties theme for the red white game. Then the next year they didn't have one because of COVID last year, back at Barnhill, they're going to do it again. They're queuing it up again, CJ next Sunday, two o'clock. It's free to the public. Uh, when you look back in the last few years under Musselman and those games at Barnhill, you're talking about five or 6,000 fans. It's a cozy atmosphere, but very hearty. And you hear, and it's always loud in Barnhill. And I think it's a great idea to do it there, but it also, kind of foreshadow some things. You know, guys like Isaiah Joe, Jalen Williams, Stanley Amudi, J.D. Notay have had big red-white games, kind of foreshadowing, you know, some big seasons they had, you know, when you got into the regular season. And, of course, we know a little bit more about this team because of the four games, the European exhibition tour back in August. But for fans who haven't seen them in person, this is the first chance to go in, see all this length, size, and athleticism we've been talking about it firsthand. Yeah. It's different seeing it up close and in person than it is seeing it on a live stream or TV. And I think the other part of it, you know, when, you, when you're getting into your season, Arkansas has an exhibition game against Texas coming up, you know, on the 29th later this month, which is very unusual. It's a first really to go on the road against a high major for an exhibition game. And so the red-white game to me is always that first dress rehearsal. It, it matters a lot because you got game officials. Like I said, you got fans. And everybody should get playing time. We don't know how much run everybody on, on scholarship, all 13, are going to get in the regular season. Mm -hmm. We know Musman keeps a tight rotation. Red-white game, everybody plays. Musman might rotate and change it during the game, in-game, how the rosters look. We, don't have, we haven't seen who's on the red and who's on the white yet, but he'll mix it up even when they establish teams. Last year it was live stream. I think it was on uh, – ESPN slash SEC Network live stream. Nothing like that's been announced this time around. We'll see if we learn more details on that. But if you got a chance to get to Barnhill Arena, this is always a great event uh, if you're a fan. And look, Arkansas is coming off pro day. You mentioned that. So these players, when we start talking about how busy things are and picking back up, yeah, they had the Spain, the Spain and Italy experience. Mm -hmm. But again, you didn't really have arenas filled with fans. You know, you might have had some family members there with players and coaches and some locals, but things really pick up when you've, when you've got a pro day where you've got 29 NBA teams represented only, only the Minnesota Timberwolves, not in the house. You had one executive in the house that I know of a uh, wild, wild uh, uh, worldwide West, also known as William Wesley, who, you know, he's an executive VP with the Knicks. So he was at pro day, but that was inside the basketball performance center. And so now things are different for this team, not only with the red-white game coming up, but that pro day and everything I heard, you know, I got some good nuggets from that. Guys like Nick Smith Jr., Anthony Black, Jordan Walsh did well, uh, Trevon Brazil. You know, I heard positives about guys like Ricky Council IV, Devo Davis, Barry Dunning. And so when you look at a guy like Walsh, you know, in, in the five-on-five, five, one scout noted he had three steals and thought he did an outstanding job defensively. All of these guys, we talk about that length and athleticism, finishes above the rim. I don't think the three-point shooting was all that great on Pro Day, CJ, but when was the last time that it has been? It wasn't great overseas. It hasn't been in practice. And I don't think these players, if you were in a good standing with your draft status, guys like Nick Smith and Anthony Black with all the projections, uh, no matter what your performance was on that day, I don't think it hurts those guys, but it certainly helped for other guys to get on the radar with a profile. And so I think it was nothing but positive. So when we look at your, your red white scrimmage coming up, that's always fun for fans. It's a positive. Everybody gets to play pro day. I don't think there's a lot of pressure there in terms of proving something in one practice, right? But it's always good to have those eyes on you. 
so I think it's, you know, it's good, not only been busy, but I think it's been positive at every angle that you look at. I don't see any negatives there for Arkansas. And I feel that way about that Texas exhibition game, by the way, because it doesn't count. I know Hog fans are not going to probably see it that way. They're going to have <laughs> expectations for a win, and they're going to have judgments if they lose. But everything's gravy now until the start of the regular season, which the first day in college basketball is November 7th, right around the corner, but a lot going on right now, as you pointed out, as well as in recruiting, CJ, we got to talk recruiting. Yep. Man, a lot of recruits. Talk about some of those recruits that have been coming to town and some of those that have been still pinpointed by the Razorbacks as well. Well, for, you know, Arkansas had three visitors in the previous weekend. We talked a little bit about it last week. Now the football team's on the road for October. They don't have a home game outside of that Alabama game on October 1st. So it's, it's going to slow down a little bit in terms of getting players on campus during this month. But, man, Bayfall, Asani Diop, those long-awaited official visits, they went really well. Uh, we talked about it last week, but I think – I still believe Arkansas is in the lead for both. I still believe that they'll make a decision – and signed during the early period, which is mid-November. And they'll be back in Arkansas in mid-November to play showcase basketball with their high school accelerated schools out of Denver. Uh, so, you know, kind of keep an eye on that because if they're committed to the Hogs and even signing during that early period, they might just be back in state already signed on the dotted line. We'll keep an eye on that. Uh, but again, when we talk about, you know, what what Arkansas recruits have done in the past week who didn't visit, K. Honor Boateng, 6'5", pushing 6'6", six, six wing in a Little Rock Central, CJ. Layden Blocker, who's already committed, class of 2023. Both of these players are five stars. Both of them had outstanding performances at the Coach Wooten's Top 150 camp last week in Dallas-Fort Worth. This is a McDonald's All-American platform uh, that camp is. And you have decision makers who, you know, once nominations are made, are the, the, the committees that make these selections. And both of those guys showed out. Now, of course, Honor Boateng's not eligible for McDonald's until he's a senior in two years, and and uh, Blocker will be this upcoming uh, se- season. But both of those guys did well, and now they're with Team USA, USA Basketball Junior National Mini Camp, ran through the weekend, and and some of the national analysts who are there, you know, it, it keeps coming back. They're getting rave reviews. Both players are standing out. There's about 62 players. When you look at the classes for 23, 24, 25, and even some class of 2026. And so a lot of players there are spread out over those classes. But for 2024, it's Boateng. 2023, it's Blocker. And both are showing well. When you go back the whole week, again, Coach Wooten's top 150 camp. And right now, Team USA, which it should wrap up this evening uh, in Colorado Springs, Colorado. So a lot going on with Arkansas recruits. And look, Arkansas coaches will be back in central Arkansas on Wednesday of this week. Uh, two players that I know of they're coming to see are, are Boateng, who we just talked about, be the, at least the second time they've seen him in the last couple of weeks uh, at Little Rock Central practice. And then a name we haven't mentioned in this segment, class of 2025, the first offer for the sophomore class. Uh, when we start talking about Terion Burgess, who's now at Benton High School, uh, also had a great showing at that Wooten camp uh, uh, last weekend. But Arkansas coaches will be in to see him as well. Wednesday of this coming week here in Central Arkansas, CJ. A lot of recruiting, but the big news next week. Make sure you guys come on out to the red and white game. The first time you see those guys in person, I'm here to tell you, and I'm sure Kevin is too, when you see these guys in person, it's a little bit different. When you see Ricky Council hanging on the rim like he has, Trevon Brazil doing things on the court, Devo Davis coming back. I mean, this team I think is going to be very, very special. And Kevin, I'll see you down there next week as well, man. All right, CJ, good to be with you as always, my man. Yes, sir. Thank Thank you for stopping by. And look, make sure you guys don't go anywhere. We got more softball because they're back at fall ball. And my goodness, we got a lot of highlights in that game as well as soccer. Make sure you stay tuned. We got more Pick Trail coming up after the break. 